Hey gang, Sarah here. So I'm here to talk to you about my OneNote system. So how I build OneNote into my productivity system overall. Um, so if you've been watching for a while, you've noticed that I got rid of like my work notebook basically. And it's because I've really migrated that over to OneNote and I really like it. Like I, I'm all in on the work notebook being in OneNote. Um, so again, all of these tools could be related to like all the other different notes software. I use OneNote because that's what my company offers as part of the Microsoft suite. And I just like it. I, I do like the Microsoft suite. Um, and it's always there. And then I have it for school and my kids have it for school. So we just all, we're just a Microsoft family. Now I am showing you all of it on a MacBook because that's what I use for my videos. I unfortunately don't have a Surface. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get into it. And really what the OneNote does for me is it gives me access to everything. It allows me flexibility and it really allows me to index all the things that I need to index, like file things, keep track of things, all the moving pieces at my fingertips. So whether I'm home or at work, or uh, home or traveling, I'm able to access it right on my phone. So this is really why I like OneNote. I still use my planner because that's more of like a daily management um, and I haven't really replaced my daily planner, but, um, and my calendar is really like my North Star. So I'll show you how I use OneNote to keep track of all the things, keep track of what my team is working on, how do I manage their workload, uh, file management and also just like the level of effort I need to put into things in the regards of like sometimes my meetings or my projects are pretty informal and then I have more formal projects or sometimes I have reoccurring meetings and sometimes I have one-off meetings like how the heck do you wrangle all this well this system is going to answer that for you so when it makes it easier for when I'm going into a meeting, I have the history of what we talked about. I have everything right at my fingertips. I'm not like flying around looking for stuff. So this is really um, how I use my OneNote to help me manage all the things at work. So you'll see my mock-up of my OneNote for work, and then I'll show you a little bit of my personal OneNote, how I use it for a bedroom remodel that I'm working on. So it's very flexible. So I hope you like this kind of thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the questions, like what am I missing? What are some of the challenges you have with keeping track of all the things for projects or one-off meetings or how to manage your team's workload? So we're gonna get into it. Thanks. All right, hey everyone. So this is an example of my OneNote. It's not my actual OneNote because I kind of can't show you all that stuff, but I mocked it up in a way that like shows you. So obviously there's a bunch of repetitive stuff in here because I had to build out some like templates for fake things. <laughs> All right, so anywho, um, so this is my, this is what my OneNote really looks like without the, you know, relevant details or personal details to my work. So anyhow, um, I have one notebook that has different sections. So there's four different sections. So 2024 notebook, and then it has um, like an overview, projects, meetings, and then a templates file. So every time I build something out, I basically just copy it into the template so I could just copy and paste it and reuse it. So for the overview, this is like, you know, a quick links to all the links that I have um, that I reference or whether they're actually in my OneNote or it could be in like my OneDrive or something. So these are like the quick, quick links to everything. And then this is an example of the Kanban board. And you'll see here that um, some of them have hyperlinks and those are the ones that I drive. So this is Sarah, so me. And then this is project two um, and this will click, if I click on this, it goes right to the dashboard I have set up for that project. And that is in the initiation stage. And then this one here is project number one that I'm driving for the sales group and it's in execution right now. So those have hyperlinks because I'm responsible for keeping track of like action planning, uh, detailed project plan, um, charters, A3s, 
presentations, data, whatever. So that would be an example of what I have in my project dashboard. Then you see some other ones here that are, you'll see TM1 project one. So that's team member one, project one, and that project is um, owned by team member one. It's for human resources and it's an initiation page. So you can see, I kind of keep track of each of the different team members here um, and what we have in flight basically. So team member two, project one, the team member, I would have their names and, and then more details of the person and the customer in operation. So I'd have like, I don't know, John Smith or whatever. Um, but just to kind of give you an example of how I do this, just helps me just kind of understand how, who's doing what in that workload. So check out the Kanban board that I had set up. Um, all right, and then also the overview would be an example of all my goals. And obviously these are just like dumbed down and I just keep track of where I'm at for each of the goals and what projects are linked to them. And these would go into it. And sometimes my team members are, you know, working on some of my goals. Um, you know, like I set the strategy and we execute it and then I make sure it gets done. So I'm not taking credit for the work. It's just like a team thing. <laughs> I just wanna make sure everyone was clear on that. So anyway, this is really like the overview. Um, and I'm still really building this out to be honest, but this is where I'm at today. Then I have the weekly dashboard. So you guys see this when I'm doing kind of my weekly productivity system update. So this is what it would look like. And again, these are all just make believe things. So I keep a dashboard of all my running list. And these are links to all the meeting notes from that actual meeting. And I have a naming convention so I can find them. Now my calendar is really like my per my point of view, like I use that as a reference for everything. So if I go back and we're talking about, you know, um, you know, a container load, right? We, I would just search my calendar for like container load meeting. And then I would see what days we had that. And then I'm like, oh yeah, let me go through the notes. Um, and then you can see it now. Well, I'll go into that a little bit more in depth. Um, all right. So the next stage is really the projects. So the projects here, this is really just a quick reference. And I obviously don't have this built out, but this is what the dashboard would look like. I just keep a project link folder or any important files, maybe presentations, but there's always a link. There's always a name and the status and execution. So this would be linked back to my Kanban board in the execution. And then I'll have like my team members and all that on there, but this is an overview. Um, it's the dashboard. So I keep track of that for every project I have. Sometimes I have to use an A3. Um, so really when I have a formal project, I kind of manage it through the A3 process, but I have a lot of like kind of informal projects too. Um, so I'll just manage those a little bit less formally, um, because it's just this kind of overkill for some of the projects. Now you'll see this one here. So this one I would say it would be an example of a formal project when I'm trying to like, when I publish meeting minutes and all of that, this is really um, how I would do it. And you can see the meeting on 813 and the meeting on 816. And I just have the notes and the documents and I might link files here. So this would be an example of more of a formal project I would run. And then this one here would be more an example of an informal project that I would run. Um, so, and this would be just a running list. So three weeks ago, this was the agendas and this was what we talked about, you know, two weeks ago, I always put the latest meeting up. We were working through the training outline and this the agenda item and then the discussion points that we had. And then we did a status update meeting and here's the agenda item in there. And I just keep this template and I copy and paste and add a row. Um, and then I might populate these quick links with any, you know, files that we're managing or working through that I sh often share with the team. I just kind of keep it there that are relevant to project two and uh, the same, I, I'm just missing it here, but I would do the same here, but sometimes the links are right in the actual notes. Um, so here's an example, and I have a history of all the projects I have. So my list and my real notebook, and I don't, this is an Apple or Mac, but I don't. I actually prefer a PC because OneNote actually works better in a PC in my opinion, um, but this is my personal computer. So um, it's actually set up a little differently, the layout, but anyway, um, so it links to everything, I guess is my point. That was a little tangent. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alrighty, so going into my meetings. Now, I have like two types of meetings. So the project meetings always stay in my project folder. folder. That's like the hierarchy that we would have. Okay, so for the meetings, this I have any project meetings always linked to the project that always goes there. But then I have two types of meetings. So I have like reoccurring meetings and one off meetings. Um, so an example of a one off meeting is like, hey, can you just join a quick call? I want to get your perspective on this or hey, we just got to do a quick update on this, right? But it's not super formal. It's not my project. It's kind of just whatever. And uh, it may turn into a project, I don't know. But then you have these reoccurring meetings, like I have my team meetings, which are on like a bi-weekly basis. And then I have my one-on-ones that are on a bi-weekly basis. Then I have one-on-ones with a couple vice presidents and then my manager. Then we have like business review meetings or operations review meetings. So those would be examples of my reoccurring meetings so for my one-off meetings here would be an example like i just have this note like i just keep a running list i'm an attendee of these meetings i am not driving these meetings so i don't really need to prepare anything i might prepare some speaking points so like this so this one-off meeting on august 22nd a productivity call these are all made up meetings by the way they were first for an example they would send out like a proof of concept data set and then i would actually save it in my email. I would save the email that has the explanations of how to read the data set. And I'll save that in like a, a folder on my, on my, in my OneDrive that says meetings. And I just name them the same thing so I can find them later on. And again, I always go back to my calendar to say, when did we talk about this? So this is actually the meeting date and the name of the meeting. So I can always just copy and paste and find it in my calendar. So I might get an email that supports the information in the data set. So I'll save both. And this is where I would uh, review it and I would put down my agenda items like, oh, I have a question about this metric or I have a question about this um, formula, those types of things. And then this one here is like, oh, I see I'm meeting. This is the agenda that was put out. And these are the points that I want to keep track of. I don't do this for all meetings. It's It might be like some that if I have a hunch that might turn into a project or if it's related to my team or my functional areas, then I would obviously keep a little bit more um, rigorous notes. And again, it's just a quick links and you might have links here to project folders or, or the meeting folder. Um, so this would be just a running list. So it's always the newest meeting. So you can see like, and I just made these all up by the way. So that's why it's copied and pasted. Um, so I can kind of show you how it works. And then my team meeting, it's the same thing. So for my team meeting, I always keep an update of like things I want to talk to my team about. So if I'm in a meeting, I'll come in and be like, oh, for next week's meeting, I want to talk to them about this. So I keep my running agenda always open so I don't forget to tell my team things because I, I have done that in the past. Or like if I have a, a topic that I want to discuss with them or an idea I want to discuss with them, I'll start to like, I throw it in there. So when the team meeting comes, I already have my agenda built for me. And then here, like if there's any emails that I need to share with them or any instructions or whatever, or any roadblocks, whatever, there's just, I attach the files to the links. And then here I have some just related links to the Kanban board so I can go back and say, hey, what's going on? That kind of thing. Um, or like a project two that might they might be involved in. And then I have their, their one-on-one -on -one files as well in here. So there's just an example. So this is my team meeting and the running list. So always the latest meeting is always at the top. And then here's a good example of a team member one. So I have three team members. This is their one-on-one -on -one and I just kind of keep a running list. Again, same logic There's something I want to talk about. I just throw it in the agenda. I have all the links related to them. Now I don't keep track of their project plans. I just have a, uh, an overview going on of what their projects are. Um, so I don't keep track of their project plan or their project folders or anything like that. That's their responsibility. But I have, if I need it, I'll have access to it. And if I need to reference it, I'll put it in here so I don't keep asking them for the same thing. And then their goals and objectives are over here that are handled, handled in like success factors or whatever. So anyway, same thing. Um, and then that's the same. So I keep the one for every single team member. And this is really helpful because sometimes I forget what I tell them or I didn't tell them 
or if they're having issues or if maybe I'm ha- they're having a productivity issue, a, a work issue or personal issues. But, you know, I keep a track of it because I can be like, oh, in 731, we talked about that. What's going on? Is there confusion or do I need to clarify anything? Now, the same thing with the vice president. I, you know, I don't talk when I get on a call with a vice president, I want to use their time wisely. So I always have a running agenda going. So throughout the week, um, I'll throw any topics I need to discuss with them. Or if I find that I don't have anything, I'll say, hey, VP, I don't really have any topics for you. Do you have anything for me? Because we can cancel, right? And give them that that 30 minutes back. Um, same thing, my manager. Um and actually I always have the same thing. I would have their goals, my goals and objectives here, and we'd be talking through them. It's the exact same logic. I would have an update to the Kanban board if he has any questions about my team's work. Um, so these are all like kind of like reoccurring meetings. And then the, the monthly operations review. So this one, um, sometimes I might throw a graph in there or performance related information because this is stuff that I would probably communicate out to my team. So I would reference back um, what the updates are. So I would take screen snapshots if it's not confidential, of course. These are just images from Google. (laughs) But just to show you, like sometimes I keep uh, screen snapshots of things that I need to remember or I pass on to my team so I can explain it properly. And then I also link the file to the presentation that they they send out afterwards. So I always just keep a running update. Um, and whether I need to share it with my team or not, that's dependent on what the situation is. And then I have a, a quick links. So I'll just kind of, that's just a little bit of an overview. And I really want to know what you guys think about this. Like, do you, would this be helpful to you? Um, these are some of the things that I talked about in my coaching program that we did. I would got help build them out, this out for them. Um, so it, it's relative to them. Uh, what else? I keep saying what else? All right. So templates. And these are just like as I build stuff out, I just kind of like throw them in here just so I don't have to keep rebuilding them and I can reuse them. Uh, so how it functions is as I'm going through this, like I can go project to dashboard and it links right back to the page. Um, if I want to look at the more re- review, then here we go. It brings me back to this page. If I want to go to the presentation, So if I want to go to the presentation, it would be right here. There's really nothing in that file. It's just a blank PowerPoint. (laughs) Um, And then what else? What else? So then going back to it, um, really, yeah. So this this is really just how it works. And I'll tell you, this is where I live. uh, This is basically my North Star, right? This is guiding me to everything. And I I use this all the time. So what questions do you have? It would be fun for me to like see what I'm missing. So tell me what you guys or how you would struggle to keep track of things and how you could find this useful for you because this has been, this replaced my work bullet journal. So this is definitely streamlining. And what I love about it is when I do have these like meetings, I can just copy and paste from here and throw it in an email and say, here, this is what we discussed. Um, so let me know what you think about this, uh, if you would find this useful or overkill, because this really has transformed, like how I keep track of what I need at the right time. So that this is why it's so important to me to have my one note and why I really just went to a planner. Um, and then let me see. All right. So just so you can see how to use this for fun right now, I'm working And I do use this for like my personal life too. And I freaking love this because while I'm on TikTok or scrolling, I take screen snapshots and now I have a feel for like where to put this stuff. So um, this is how I'm designing, like I'm redoing my master bedroom. This has been my goal and I wanted to do like a certain vibe. So here's how I would use like the feel, the colors that I want, right? And how I plan on kind of using it and decorating it and the different elements of it. Um, So, I mean, I really use OneNote like you wouldn't believe. So anyhow, this is just some of the ways that I use it for my personal stuff. You guys have seen some of this here and this is just sorting through the notes. Why I like this is because it's always accessible for me um when i'm out and about so i always have my phone i don't always carry my planner and also what i like about this is just having those running meeting things because when i'm talking to my um 
like I'm in meetings, I'm like, no, when we talked about it on August 22nd, we talked about this and this is how we were going to use it. So what changed, right? So it's just so easy to find the information that I need at any point in time. And I always have it on my phone or my iPad. I do tend to use my iPad. I'm not like a writer on the iPad because my writing is terrible, as you all know but I do use the keyboard on my iPad. So I'm not sharing my screen while I'm taking notes. I always just kind of have it off to the side. So let me know what questions do you all have for me? Um, I love this thing. Like it's definitely key. I talk about it. I'm going to Vegas and I planned it and everybody I'm going with, they were making fun of me, but they're like, this is really helpful because <laughs> I'm also doing the same thing for Vegas. So let me know what you all think and what questions you have for me and if you think this would be helpful for you. So thanks for watching, everyone. You have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.